Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's the 2014 remake of the original King of Monsters himself, Godzilla. That's right. This year, we now have a new version that we've been waiting for for years to come. After the 1998 film, which was written and directed by Roland Emmerich and Dean Devon had failed, to, to please the audience and the Godzilla fans out there. As we all know, it was now known simply as Zilla, which the company Toho actually renamed the, the creature because they all agree that it doesn't look exactly like Godzilla whatsoever. In fact, it's not even close. It was basically a lizard that's that's part T-Rex dinosaur uh, mixed in with an iguana and frog hands. It's just not the Godzilla we all know and love. It's just a, a fake one. You kind of got the idea because it's it wasn't a good movie at all. But it had its moments. However, this version is without a doubt a whole lot better the 1998 film for sure they really got everything right and they knew exactly what a Godzilla movie is supposed to be so we finally got one and it was amazing so anyway it stars Aaron Taylor Johnson from Kick-Ass Ken Watanabe from the movie Exception and The Last Samurai Elizabeth Olsen Julia Binoche Sally Hawkins David Stranahern and Brian Cranston from the TV show Breaking Bad as well as Malcolm in the Middle some episodes of Seinfeld and many others and it's directed by Garrett Edwards who previously did the film Monsters the movie begins in 1954 after a nuclear bomb test which the bomb had been detonated a huge figure with jagged spikes that rises from the sea. As we fast forward to 1999, two scientists, Ikrio Sarisawa and Vivian Graham, both played by Ken Watanabe and Sally Hawkins, are called to a strip mine in the Philippines where a colossal skeleton and the two egg-shaped pods have been discovered. Only one has hatched and has escaped. And somewhere in Japan, a nuclear pan had experienced an unusual semistic activity which causes plant supervisor Joe Brody and his wife Sandra, both played by Brian Princeton and Julia Binoche, as well as a team of, of supervisors decided to check the sensors into the core. That is until an explosion had occurred threatening to release radiation to the outside. Sandra and her team are unable to escape, and the plant had collapsed into ruins, causing it a major disaster. Fifteen years later, Joe's son Ford, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, is an explosive ordnance disposal officer in the United States Navy, living in San Francisco with his wife Ellie, played by Elizabeth Olsen, and his son Sam, played by Carson Bowl. When Joe was arrested for trespassing the quarantine area, Ford travels to Japan only to find out the actual cause of the disaster. And once they find everything that they found during the disaster area, such as zip disk and many others that happen, only leads to a bigger major problem is when they discover it's a colossal winged creature, which is now known as uh, Mutu, massive identified terrestrial organism. So that only leads to U.S. Navy Admiral William Stantz, played by David Strathairn, on, along with the Army and the crew inside a battleship to find a better way to stop these two creatures from attacking the cities, including San Francisco, Las Vegas, and Hawaii. But that was until they finally found another monster that occurred, and it turns out to be, as we speak, Godzilla. The, a much larger animal that was awakening during this deep sea exposition in 1954. 
So their plan was, once they kill the two creatures by using nuclear weapon, it's up to Godzilla to come around and, and stop these two creatures from coming. And out of all the Godzilla movies that I've seen, this is definitely the best one so far. Because there were so many Godzilla movies that I really enjoy, including the original 1954 film. Yeah, both the Japanese version and the Raymond Burr version all together. A classic. And then, of course, there were so many ones that followed after that, including the classic one. It was definitely one of my favorites. King Kong vs. Godzilla. Yeah, that was the best one where they have the greatest evil ape named King Kong teaming up with the King of Monsters. Yeah, the battle of the death. <laughs> yeah, the battle of two iconic monsters. Because I know they've been making a lot of King Kong films as well that follow. And then there was a lot of films that also followed, everything from Godzilla vs. Mothra to Godzilla Revenge, everything. Um, I really enjoy them. And I even did enjoy the, the Godzilla 1985 film that came out in 1985, which brought back Raymond Burr. More like they wanted to bring back Godzilla from its form. I would love to see that film again, because that movie has been so hard to find. It's been on VHS for years now, and hasn't been released on DVD or Blu-ray. I think it's been on Laserdisc, though. But maybe someday that, that film will be found, and I'll definitely release it. It's not the greatest of all, of all the Godzilla films, but it was definitely worth watching. And the others that followed after that, um, some were great, others were mediocre. And yes, I'm talking about the 1998 film, which was... <laughs> Not a Godzilla movie as we all know and love. I mean, this was just as we speak. Uh, just awful. It was it was a shitty version of it. I mean, they knew they made a big mistake when they made it. And we knew about what was happening. Uh, I, I almost wish, you know, <laughs> I want to pretend like it didn't exist. You know, the sad part about that, though, is that I actually did own the film on DVD. Yeah. Well, well, biggest can be choosers. But, you know, but I gotta admit, it did have its moments, though. I did like the Cisco and Eber parodies that they threw in, and, and so on and so forth. It was actually interesting to see free actors, but yeah, all of which were on The Simpsons. <laughs> Hank Azaria, Harry Shearer, and... Nancy Cartwright, yeah, had a cameo in that. And of course, Jean Reno from uh, Leon the Professional and many others. It was good, but oh boy, it was just over the map. It was not that good. Maverick Brovick was probably one of the weakest of them all as a scientist. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that good. But after that disaster, there was the 2000 film called Godzilla 2000 and I really loved that one more because at least it's the original Godzilla we all know and love it was the real deal we got to see that in theaters I enjoy that one and there were other ones that followed too especially the 2001 movie where they were about the transport of Godzilla in Japan yeah, yeah that was their plan they wanted to get rid of Godzilla but then there was another one called The Final Wars and that was a classic one because they managed to get all the creatures um, around the world that are from the, the previous Godzilla movies. Yeah, all of them. And they did manage to throw in the 1998 version of Godzilla. You know, who's always be known as Zilla, not Godzilla. <laughs> Make an appearance in that film. And I like the fact that the original Godzilla beat the shit out of that one. <laughs> that was funny. But... Back to the 2014 film, I really enjoy it. it. It was definitely the Godzilla movie that I really know and love. Um, it's a lot different though, because I noticed the, the facial features they had in, into this one. But it's definitely the right improvement of what Godzilla really looks like. The only problem with the film though, was that it was a bit slow paced. 
I, I think they focus more on the human characters more than what the story had to be about but it kind of builds up some attention to see what really happens um, around the city where you know there's going to be an attack that was happening you know exactly what's going to happen you know all the creatures are going to show up they're going to attack everything that they they tried only to have the whole army and the whole crew to stop them and using all these nuclear warheads, everything, missiles, just to stop them. But at least it was great to see Godzilla again on screen. Um, but the only problem I didn't enjoy though was that it was lacking one element. There wasn't enough fight scenes between Godzilla and the the two creatures, you know, Mewtwo's as they call them. I wish I could see more of that because I mean, it was definitely what it's supposed to be about. We, we knew we wanted to see the battle between them. I just wish they didn't focus more on the humans too much. I, I mean, this isn't Transformers, by the way. I mean, yeah, which, yeah, another film that <laughs> seems to focus more on humans than than the robots themselves. But, but that's okay. I know. I'm t I'm trying to. I'm comparing two different uh, movies, you know, franchises, because uh, we know Godzilla came out way before Transformers did. But I just wanted to talk about how the movies have to be acted, that's all. On the other hand though, the cast, they were okay. Uh, nothing special. I mean, Aaron Taylor Johnson is a great actor, coming from Kick-Ass, but I thought his character was just, you know, just like any other characters you've seen in movies. You know, just a fodder. Um, Brian Cranston's also good, but unfortunately you don't see enough of him in the film. Well, that's a shame. But other than that though, it's definitely worth watching. Mostly because you get to see a, a monster movie we all know and love. We grew up with it. I know a lot of fans of Godzilla really enjoyed it, in spite of its problems. But other than that though, definitely go see it. Either in 2D, 3D, or IMAX, it's worth killing two hours, over two hours, of pure enjoyment that you get from these monster movies. And that's a good plus behind that. So anyway, I give Godzilla, the 2014 version, four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.